an ounce It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown What's going on, everybody? And welcome to Lions Lions News and Rumors here on Lions Nation Unite. I actually said welcome to Lions Talk Live because I've seen the Lions Talk Live thing here. Um, sorry, uh, just a little bit of a funny right before we went live. We got Dan the man from Lions Talk Live. What's going on, bro? Not too much, Mike. Just another beautiful day in paradise if you're a Lions fan. One day closer to the NFL draft. Oh, man. One day closer to the NFL draft where our team is going to get better. And an individual who knows about prospects is Ant-Man. What's going on, Ant-Man? I'm doing good, Mike. Three weekends to go, and then we're there. So I'm I'm, I'm, I'm about ready for it. You know, it's the process of a year-long culmination. You're like, yep, we're good to go. 100%. Everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. We get the latest Lions news and rumors. we got actually a couple players we got to talk about for free agency. That's not Detroit Lions players that the Lions could be looking at. we got James Janella. Brett DeWitt, Lisa DeLorenzo, nine drinks in the building. Kirk Kasparik, welcome, welcome, Dragon Fan Tim. And I'm sure people start rolling in. Go ahead and hit that like button, all that lovely stuff. Folks just came out today. The Detroit Lions are looking at Tyler Boyd, wide receiver, Cincinnati Bengals, potentially add him to this football team. Ant-Man, thoughts on Tyler Boyd? I mean, it I think it'd be a very good addition for us. You know, he's always worked well in the, that you know rotation at Cincy. They've had three big guys there. He's been part of it. We've got Amon Ra, we've got JMO. He's going to be that kind of steady, reliable guy. He'll get us the yardage that Josh Reynolds had and, and that sort of leaves there. And it's another established option for us. And he's, he's been in the league a long time. I guess the only thing with him is, what is he sort of looking at money-wise? Because I know he's turned down Pitt and a few other teams. So is, is it going to cost us a lot? I don't know. But, you know, having him on the team would be a really good thing. In depth in that rotate, depth and rotation in that wide receiver room would be really good with him here. Really, really good for sure. It, it would be nice if you added him to the free agency pickups that we have had. Dan the man, what do you think about Tyler Boyd? You know, he wouldn't be bad depth. Uh, I'm I'm going to think that Donovan Peoples-Jones will probably step up and have an increased role this upcoming season. But someone like Boyd, you know, if nothing else, you're going to add a veteran presence, more stability, sort of like Ant-Man said, you're going to have more depth. So it wouldn't be a bad move at all. This team has very few holes. Yeah, look, 67 receptions, 667 yards, two touchdowns at an average of 10. Very similar numbers to Josh Reynolds, except for Josh Reynolds had more touchdowns of eight. So, they strike out on Reynolds. If they get Tyler Boyd, I don't think they need to get a wide receiver in the draft. That's just my my opinion here. I don't know if it would happen before the draft or after the draft. Some of these free agents want to wait till after the draft just to kind of see where the teams are sitting. But if they were to sign Tyler Boyd, man, do you think that they should not draft a wide receiver then in the draft? I think – no, I think you still could, but I don't then think you've got a priority to need to do it really high. Like, if you bring him in, then you can sort of take a wild swing later on and, you know, like you did be on to one green next year, uh, last year, and then see what happens. You're not under pressure to go and get one day one or day two if Tyler Boyd's here, really. So, I think, uh, but again, we know Brad doesn't operate that way. It's just the best player wherever he's at. But I, I think as far as the team goes, it would be good for us that, you know, if he did come to a decision on one of those first two-day picks, and he's like, oh, I can have this guy or a wide receiver. We, we don't need to rush it there. So, I think they would. But it'd be day three if you get Tyler Boyd. Hennon Hooker's our backup quarterback, Donald P. Minor. He is the guy. That is our backup quarterback. And he's I would say he's probably the best backup in all of football. Y'all, you guys are going to be real happy when you see him in preseason because I liked him before the draft, and I could, cannot wait for him to be in the preseason. And everybody can be like, oh, oh, that's why we drafted Hennon Hooker. You're going to see that. Um, Dan, if the Lions sign Tyler Boyd, do you think they take a wide receiver in the draft? Uh, I think it's just really going to come down the draft. 
who falls to where for in the in the grand scheme of things. I don't really think the Lions or Brad Holmes are going into this particular draft trying to look for player A or B. It's where what player is going to be the best overall player on the board at that time, regardless of position. If it happens to be a wide receiver, we're probably taking them. Yeah, I, I, that's how they operate, folks. And I know a lot of people will be mad if they go offense. I can. It happens every year. They get mad if if they decide to go in a direction that we don't expect them to. But don't get upset. If it is the best player available, it's the best player available. Would you pass on Laporta just to get an edge rusher? Would you pass on Brian Branch just to get, I don't know, a different position? Would you pass on Jameer Gibbs? I think everybody would say no. Like, no. Like, you just get the premium talent. I'm just hoping, Ant-Man, that it's the best player available at a position of need right? Like cornerback or edge. That's what I am hoping for. But if it's not the case, they're going to take whoever they want to take. Exactly. You are going to get guys who, you know, they have the men, the, more than anything, they have the mentality. Like they come here, they've, they've got the, they've got the skills, but they've got the mentality to be a player here as well. Like to be, like all these guys they go up for, like I fully expect he's, he's going to move in this draft. He's going to move around a lot. He yes. always does because they will have specific guys lined up, and and this draft is is it's it's a weird one because there's going to be lots of offensive linemen early, lots of quarterbacks early. It's going to start dropping some of that defensive talent down in a range where you'll be like, well, he's going to go and get him. So I don't mind who he gets because I know it's going to be a great player, and and you build around that. He uses free agency to cover the gaps. We've seen that so far. DJ Reed is here. We needed a defensive tackle. You know, we needed corners. He's gone out and got that, and now we can just go and draft really good players regardless of where they are. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It just works out well for the team. Folks, no one should be upset about a Sudfield sign, and I'm going to tell you why. He's a three-quarterback. He is used for training camp and preseason. That is all he's going to be used for. It is nothing more and nothing less. He's not competing for a role or anything, but you got to have more than two quarterbacks for training camp, mini camp, OTAs, and preseason. That's just the way that it works. So... They didn't re-sign Josh Reynolds because Josh Reynolds went to the Denver Broncos and he didn't want to be here. Folks, he didn't want to be here. And I'm going to, it's not because he didn't like the Detroit Lions. Okay. The reason he didn't want to be here is because a lot of toxic Lion fans harassed him after he made those drops in the NFC Championship game. That's why he's leaving, folks. He wants a fresh start because he was getting harassed. Dan, tell him. I mean, it's, it's part of sports. At any level, but in when you're talking about Detroit Lions fans, all of us we've been waiting around for 70 years for an opportunity to get to the Super Bowl. And now when he had an opportunity to get there, we all get it. He'd been reliable all season long. He just unfortunately had that big fourth down drop and then another one, you know, a couple drives later. And I'm gonna guess driving through the streets of Metro Detroit, you stop to get gas, maybe grocery, maybe pick up a Mountain Dew. Uh yeah, people are gonna light him up over it. And there was just he was going to live with that probably the rest of his career here in Detroit, so he just decided to move on. I, I think it's sad because a lot of players made mistakes, but he's the only one that's getting the heat. Jameer Gibbs fumbled in that that bad boy, right? That There was um, multiple drops from St. Brown and Sam Laporta, but for whatever reason, I, I know it was on fourth down with Josh Reynolds, but folks, a drop is a drop, and they all did it. So I wish Josh Reynolds nothing but the best. And it sucks that he had to deal with that. It does because I, I don't think he really deserved it. Um, the hate that he was getting hate, like straight up hate. Like, dude, it's a gay man. Don't need to crucify this guy. Uh, so that's that's there. So uh, another rumor is the Detroit Lions are looking at of one of three teams. We're looking at Xavier Howard, cornerback from the Miami Dolphins. What do you think about Xavier Howard uh, potentially as a Detroit Lion at man? I mean, there's no doubt, and he's a really great player. Like he is, and he would be an upgrade to our room instantly if you were to bring him here. Um, it's just for, for me, like the signings we've made, brought Carlton Davis in, and that you know, we need to get younger there now. Like, we, we've got really no rookies left at the corner position anymore. We, we need to start rebuilding that room from the bottom with the young guys and creating long term sustainability with it. Xavier Howard will not be a long term sustainable part of the future here, and we've kind of already bought the vets in for this time so it just depends what you want to do i guess if you feeling like you want to go all in this year a little bit and you want to go and get him for a year fine but you know just if it's me personally i think no i'd just rather go younger at the position now and and, and start again because like i say we're going to need those guys eventually 
Below says Reynolds catches that. Lions win. Well, if we don't fumble the ball with Jameer Gibbs, we probably win the game. If Vildor doesn't have that catch, no catch interception, we probably win the game. If like if St. Brown caught a couple passes, a little everybody choked in that third quarter. It wasn't just one player. I know a lot of people is giving him grief because we probably do win if he catches it. But you know there was ma- multiple mistakes. There was every multiple single mistakes. team has this though. Like I do it. He's got to have. A, I don't know what's gone on here. Whether it's been really bad or anything like that, but you've got to figure. Come on, every team. Look at Philly. Like Philly, they're toxic towards their best player. If, you're not going to go somewhere else, do the same, and get away with it. Like it's going to happen wherever you go. It is part and parcel of it. I just, I just can't believe that's the like. He's gone and got himself a bag there. I don't know how much. It's, it's the same thing. He says that Jameer Gibbs fumbled one time the entire right. season. Not bad, honestly. Right. And Josh Reynolds wasn't dropping passes the whole season until that game. It just it was just a cluster of F. Everybody was starting to cluster in the third quarter. I mean, look like, at Cam Sutton. He dropped two picks. You know, like you mentioned, Mike, uh, Vildor dropped one. I mean, there's a lot of blame to go around. It doesn't come down to one play. It's just magnified because uh, Josh Reynolds' drop is on fourth down. That's all. I, I like Josh Reynolds. <laughs> Um, the, the, the concerns I had was obvious is actually not the ones that in the NFC is him fumbling it with, as a wide receiver. He did that a couple times this year. That was my more concern, but he is now a Denver Bronco and I wish him nothing but the best. The Lions need to get better um, at that position. I have no problem with doing that. Xavier Howard, Dan, what do you think about him potentially coming to the Lions? Would you like the Lions to sign him? Yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it, Mike, especially if you're targeting him for, you know, cornerback four or something like that. Uh, I think his best days are probably behind him. What what he still seems to have that they've pretty much addressed this offseason. You look at all the guys they've brought in or retained, I guess you'd say with Emmanuel Mosley, they're all able to do press. They're all good off the release, recovery, and they all have long wing spans to help def- uh, deflect passes. Uh, Howard would fit with that. I don't think you want to match him up with a number one or two wide receiver, yeah, okay. maybe not even number three anymore. But if you're talking about depth player, Somebody get out there and give you a couple snaps every game, especially on third down. He's probably still good for that. Yeah, for sure. He's he's still good for that. But I, I'm all about the draft right now. I don't know about you guys, and I, that's my focus. Like, free agency is kind of a little bit of the past for me. Right. I'm looking towards the draft. I want them to really focus there. And if we miss out on something at a wide receiver or offensive line or DB, you go back to free agency and get something to help you out or make a trade. But, um, yeah, like, I, I wouldn't mind Xavier Howard here. Let's see what we get in the draft first. You know, I, I, I like Tyler Boyd. See what we get in the draft first. And th- then we can we can revisit it because that's the best way to go. Because I, I I fully trust Brad Holmes' ability to find talent in this year's draft and have us have them being great. I mean, the guy has proven it. He, he knows right. what he's doing. He's absolutely proven it. So I trust Brad Holmes in the draft like I, like never before. And whoever he drafts, I'm going to support 110%. And that's just hashtag facts. So Cam Sutton ended up being a misdemeanor. Him turned himself in. It's, it sounded horrible on the run. And then ended up being a misdemeanor. Man, Ant-Man, why did he just turn himself in right when he found out? I don't. I think he would have saved millions of dollars and everything. I, we don't know, do we? You don't know into the mind of a player. I mean, apparently he's been going through a lot. I guess you know. Maybe you're scared. Maybe you're a bit, you know, <coughs> tentative about what's going to go on. It's like, oh, police want you. Like, uh oh. It can make you do silly things. Pressure can, especially when you're in front of your employers, you're at facility, and you know it's. The, the the true answer is you just don't know. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's in his head. And it's just, you know, you can't really say anything about it otherwise. But at least the thing is, he's there now because we're worried that something bad might have happened. He's at least all right. And, well, that's the main thing. And now he can face, you know, whatever's happened, he can face the consequences for that. But at least he's there to do so. Like, that's the main thing. What about you, Dan? What do you think about this? It being a misdemeanor and he just gone. Uh, you know, Mike, I, I get when he left Lions facilities, he went AWOL or missing or whatever for about a, a week. My guess is he probably, and we talked about it a little bit uh, last night on the show, uh, we 
I believe he probably checked himself into a facility just to kind of get himself right, take a break from things, uh, maybe remove any kind of possibility to doing any further harm to the situation. If that's the case, then he would have been without any kind of communication to the outside world for about five or so days. So should he have handled it better? Probably, but he didn't. So here's where he at. It's a misdemeanor. Probably my guess is he's got enough legal power where it'll get pleaded down to something very minute. And from there, oh, maybe he can resume his career and move on. For sure. So I wish him none the best. Hopefully he can uh, make his career and move on. We got Curtis Steele in the building. Man, I appreciate you, Kurt, coming in here. Part of Lions Nation Unite. Folks, we're going to do a mock draft. And I'm going to do the clicking. And Ant-Man and then Dan is going to do the drafting. Let's get this thing going. We're going to do the Ant-Man draft first. Then we'll <laughs> do the know. or no, we'll do the Dan Man draft first cuz he can only be here for 30 minutes. Then the Ant Man draft second. So, Dan, let's right, warm up. The draft. <laughs> doodle do doodle do do. Okay, here we go. Lions are on the board. We're not going to do trades in this one. Lame. What should the Lions do? <laughs> uh, I'm taking uh, Jackson Powers. Jackson Powers Johnson, offensive center. Oregon can play center, obviously, as guard as well. Highly touted player who is going to make the Lions better. Why would you take him over some of these other prospects like Cooper DeJong, Xavier Worthy, Michael Penix? Yeah. Yeah, you just look at how MCDC brand homes construct teams. They're focused on building from the inside out. So I want to preserve that as much as I can. We are getting a little bit long in the tooth as far as the offensive line. You're going to need some younger players coming in. So that's why. Okay, so we went offensive center slash guard for pick 29. You're at 61. What are you going to do here? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Jenkins, Michigan. Going with Jenkins here. Defensive tackle. Why do you want to go DT at that position? I like his ability to, to split offensive linemen and get pressure both in the running game and at the quarterback. I think he does that pretty well. Hey, I got to say, I got to tell you what there, folks. The, the, the offensive defensive line just got better. Polk, uh, wide receiver. Polk, now you're going wide receiver here. Okay, why do you want to go receiver? Uh, just because some of our wide receiving core, you know, not all of them, but they're starting to get to the upper part of their uh, mid range, I guess you could say, where they're going to start turning 25, 26. So I want to get a little bit of depth in there, a little bit of younger guys that can come in, develop, and keep costs down at the position. Okay. Round five, 164. What do you got? Uh, let's go with Johnson, Cedric. Okay. We got an uh, edge. It, it just only took till round five to get one. Yep. Uh, and basically just the thought process is we've got a, a bunch of young guys there at that position that have done okay, just not great. I want to add a little bit more depth. And again, try to keep some costs down at the position by getting some lower end contracts here. I'm going to go with uh, Proctor from Ohio state safety. All right. We definitely need some help. Then we're back on the board here. Uh, here. Let me look over the board, the big board. <laughs> I'm going to take some flack with this. Joe Milton, the third. Oh my. Oh. my. Yeah. Yep. Well, <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. We're going to do it. What, what's your final pick here? Uh, final pick here is going to be uh castles, uh, t- Tennessee tight end, Tennessee tight end. Yep. Okay. Folks grade this mock draft from Dan, the man mock draft, Jackson powers, Johnson, Chris Jenkins, we got Jelaine Polk, Cedric Johnson, Josh Proctor, quarterback Joe Milton, and Mick Colin Castles. What is your grade, Ant Man? Oh, this is mean doing this. I, you know, I actually quite like it, especially trench warfare picks. Like, I've always been a Newton guy for DT, but if we don't go for him early, Chris Jenkins, like, he's fantastic against the run. Like, he's exactly what you want here. Um, Jackson Powers Johnson, he's like Frank Ragnow incarnated, like just how tough the tough the guy is. You'll play him on you'll play him at guard for a while, and then when Frank's done, you'll just kick him in and you know you'll have another top center for a decade. You know, it's it's very good. Actually, you know, I know McCallan Castles is the last guy, but he's actually one of the best blocking titans in this draft. 
you know, he, he works in that very complicated Tennessee spread offense system. He's really good when it comes to blocking. I would actually like him if you're going to pick a tight end option as well. And to get him all the way back there would, would be tremendous. So, And Polk's underrated as out because he's just been living in Odunze's shadow. He's actually really good contested catch guy. You know, when you need someone to go up and make a play against some physical DBs, physical linebackers, he'd be the one you go for. So I don't mind overall. Um, so, yeah. Dan, we see Yo. B plus here. We see A minus B plus, but F for Milton. C plus from the Ronin. B plus from Jagan Fran Tim. So B plus area, B's. It's looking like B's is your general right here. Nine drinks says B. All right. We're now we're gonna do a restart with the Ant Man as general manager of our Detroit Lions. No uh -huh. kicker in there. I that that's from Bo Booth. Like, I want me a kicker. We're gonna get the Panthers kicker, that's why, Bo. Oh, okay. I'm gonna get an F for doing this. I know I am. I just, I just think. <laughs> All right. He's there. T take him. Take it, Johnny. Take Johnny. <laughs> we just had an extremely uh, odd thing that occurred. <laughs> Johnny Newton fell, and guess what? In the real draft, players can fall. He just taking BPA. Guess what? It's a position of need too. So I mean, that's just I like it. Absolutely. That's All right, next up. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. I'll take this. Um oh, you know, this is where people are gonna get upset with me. Um, is Christian Haynes still there? Because I'm taking him. Is he just a little bit down? How far down is he or is he gone? He might have gone. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Damn it. Uh damn it. Okay, go back up to who we've got. Let's have a look again. As well, Sanders in it. Sweat. <coughs> We can't I go can't take two. I can't do. I can't take two. Max Melton, take Max Melton. I love Max Melton. I'm gonna start my corner back room off. Max Melton. Yes, yes. He's, he's tremendous. You. He's tremendous. I absolutely love him. Okay, um, you're back on the board there. Right. Who do we have? Why? Why is Peyton Wilson all the way down there? Um. I'll tell you, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna take Peyton Wilson. You want best player away. at the position, like because he's a hybrid edge linebacker you can play him out on the air and go have an nc state fan I absolutely love him to death put him and campbell in there in the long run so we're going to need a linebacker you think you look next year you're a bit thin at the position so oh absolutely well, Booth makes him. a nice uh astute observation says okay coach master bates is our next kicker bada bing um what's your next selection here uh have a little scroll down just see who's for me if you would Williams, Kevin Williams, Christian Boyd. Take Christian Boyd there. I will double dip a tackle. He's absolutely phenomenal. And he shouldn't be going there. So, because I actually, I've been very lucky to speak to um, a scout for the Shrine, Bo Shrine Bowl who was there. And, like, he's just going to be so good. The DT room's going to be absolutely fierce. What have we got next? What else do we need? I know we're never going to guess Dude, why, this. Like, is just what I would people, do. This is what he would do, bro. And yeah. by the way, people are allowed to have fun. That's the whole point of a mock draft. Good God, man. Take that stick about you. All right, it's what's that pick at 201? Yeah. What are you thinking? Have a little scroll down again. I just don't. Um, screw it. Take Blake Watson. We have a third string because we, we need a third string running back. We'll get him in there. I think he, you know he's a tremendous dual threat um, running back from Memphis. I think there's a lot to like. There's a lot of upside there. He's right at the top. Oh, Bailey, Blake Watson. The third one. Oh, I like, uh, he's actually really good dual threat running, but I know we've got the two already. But you need depth in your room, and at this point in the draft, like that's where you go and get it. He's tremendous value there. Two oh five. Yeah. Oh, got another one. Um, yeah, it's right next to it. there. Uh, take me Dallin Holker for the third tight end or second, depending on what you think with James Mitchell. All right, so I can't wait to see the grades, and we're gonna have I think one more pick right here. One more pick. Oh, Lord. Do, 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 do. 
This is just this is just BPA or special. Yeah. Team. Okay, kicker. That's what, what I was gonna kicker? say. Special teams, man. Harrison, Harrison Mavis is Harrison Mavis there. Yeah, there you go. The thicker, the thicker kicker is the best kicker in this draft. The thicker kicker. <laughs> the thicker so kicker. grade this mock draft here: Johnny Newton, twenty-nine; Max Melton, cornerback there; Rutgers; Peyton Wilson, linebacker; Christian Boyd, DT; Blake Watson, running back; tight end Dolan Holker, and kicker Harrison Mavis. <sighs> What do you got for a grade, Dan the Man? We didn't take Melton the third, so I'm gonna have to give him an F. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go about an A minus. A minus. Oh. Okay, we got A minus there. We got a B minus. Rolling in for Dragon Fan Tim. We got A minus Lisa De Lorenzo. Okay, football. A minus from. Well, I just put it out there. James Janella goes C. So this one's all over the board. So we got A all the way to C. We got Bubble Land C. Oh, yeah, man. I didn't get an edge. Didn't get an edge, but, you know. Yeah. A, yeah, the back's melting and a kicker. A plus, B plus. Okay, starting to go up a little bit more. B plus C from Jack. A minus B plus. No opinion. Let's see. You agree with everything every says in the chat. No opinion of your own, just facts. But you disagree with me on everything. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, let's see. I ain't Lions players ready to go back to work. D, C minus O line. <laughs> Your own dad should take. Are you talking third, man? I don't know Could, if his dude's talking to me or what. All right, <laughs> let's do a mic draft, and then we'll go to QA for you guys here. Let's try. We'll see how this one pans out. Let's see how this one pans out here. Got the Lions. Hopefully. Someone is there at 29. Oh, you already know. You already know. The, do I even have to think about this one? Probably not. Do I even have to think about this one? Bolt next it is. First, fell. That's not fair. You get the edge full. You get the edge full to you. That's not fair. Oh, this is <laughs> gloriously fair. Jared Verse falls to the Lions. That's a run up there. I don't. Even, do I don't even have to explain myself why you take him? You might trip over the podium on your way up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, right there. I'm, I'm pretty happy, man. I got my guy. You know what? You got Chris Jenkins sitting right there. We already got edge. Let's get this interior done. So uh, this defensive line is going to be a ruthless um, a right then and there. Reject this trade. I wanted to get this defensive line good to go for sure. Uh, oh, I need the corners, though. I need me a corner. Uh, yeah. This this is the tough part. Now I missed out on some high end corners, and I don't want to just do just pick up. But I got Christian Mahogany there. I'm going to go with the guard here. I think that that's a good pick at 73. <clears throat> okay, mm -hmm. he's very good. Yeah, very very good. Um, unfortunately, I missed out on the corner early, but you can't get everything. I wanted to get a corner, but Jared Verse was there. I had no choice. No choice. All right. Let's go. You get to say we get to safety too, but I'm definitely looking for corners. Golly, Jarvis Brownlee. I don't even know who he is. I couldn't tell you, but I gotta get a corner. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we you know we do need a tight end. We do need a tight end. Maybe we don't have to get one. Don't have to. We can. I'll go ahead and get uh, Bell right there, and then right here. Um, yeah. I'll take Patrick McMorris, and then at the special teams, the very late. You already know where I'm going. I'm going kicker, and I'll take Cam Little. It was between Cam Little, me, and Joshua Cardi. So there we go. That's my mic draft really quick. Edge, DT, guard, cornerback, tight end, safety, kicker. I think that's awesome. Jared Verse, right there, that's got to be an A. Like, if this happens, that's an A. There's no way he falls to 29. Well, I mean, it's possible. Because we're seeing it, it like, like where he's all over the place. Right. So what's, what's your uh, grade for me, Dan the Man? 
A plus, man. He got it with those first couple picks. I <laughs> know uh, mahogany, Chris Jenkins, and Jared Verse. What do you got, my man, Ant Man? Yeah, that, that that that's an A. Top of the draft is really good there, so can't yeah. can't hate on that. Oh, A's across the board of folks. That was that has nothing to do with skill. That was called luck. <laughs> That's called luck. Folks, if you got questions, throw it in the comment section. We're going to open up for QA right now. So hashtag lines, hashtag whatever. Uh, Dan, do you got to go? I've got like two minutes. Oh, you got two minutes right there. So put questions in the comment section, hashtag whatever. We're going to do it right now. Again, if you just got in here, we talked about Tyler Boyd already. The Lions have interest in him. We talked about Xavier Howard. The Lions have interest in him. So if you're wanting to hear that part, you can either ask that question and or revisit the beginning of the show. Wolf Alliance says B. Hey, I'll take it. You always accompany Daddy to live chats. Who? What is going on here? Okay. Let's go. Is that the is that the guy from uh, Back to the Future? I don't know. I don't know. Look, we're not going to be getting starting fights or anything in here. So if there's there's issues. Just you know, kind of knock it off here. Frank the Tank from the east side. This team is set. We trade out of the first round. Go to the Lions. Do you think that the Lions will trade out of the first round, uh, Ant-Man? No. I think they'll trade up. Because okay. if the right player's there, they'll go get him. We, we're not in a position where we need to stop pile draft picks and trade down. I think... Again, if the offensive talent sort of goes really early at the top and the defensive guys start getting pushed down, we need defensive guys. We just need a few to finish it off, especially if it's a good D-tackle or an edge that falls just a little bit. We've seen in two of the mocks they have done. Then you go up and you get your guy and you finish your defense off. Go use picks next year, so be it. But that's where I'm at. Like We have very specific tag guys. We're very aggressive in the first round. You know, so... I don't think we trade out of it. I think we go. I think going up is a lot more likely. And and Biffco, that act, uh, uh, she Taylor is actually a human being. I talked to on Facebook, so it's not a fake account. Um, who are the must-have players of each of you? Well, I look when you're sitting at 29, it's hard to get a must-have. Uh, but what I would like to get as much positions is a corner and edge. If that's a Quinn Young Mitchell, I, I would that would be my number one. Quinn Young Mitchell, number two is probably Jared Verse. But I want to get cornerback edge. What about you, Dan, before you leave? Um, I there's I think there's a high likelihood we'll trade up into either the, the high teens or low twenties to get a very targeted player. You know, just my opinion, we're very deep on this year's team. Uh, I just don't see us being able to retain seven draft picks because anybody that we with our history of the last few years of having so much success in the draft, I think anybody who gets stuck on the practice squad is going to get you know picked by somebody else real quick, especially a rebuilding team. So that's why I'm leaning towards the Lions, probably trading two or three draft picks, uh, moving on up and getting a very targeted player of need. Who that's going to be, man, I don't know. Best guess here, probably Jackson Powers or maybe Latour or somebody else on the defensive edge line. Uh, I don't see us going after a cornerback. Um, at least not this year, unless it's a later round one that they know they're going to have to groom and that nobody's going to specifically come out and try to snag right away uh, from the practice squad. So take it forward what's worth. Appreciate you coming in, Dan. Tell the folks where they can find you. Uh, come on over every day of the week to the Lions Talk Live, 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be a part of the Duke crew. Come on over, get your morning started, and talk a little bit about the Detroit Lions. See you later, buddy. See you guys. Take it easy, Dan. Ant-Man, do you think that we're done in free agency until after the draft? Mm, I, I would think so, yeah. I mean, you're three weeks out now. This is generally the point where, like you say, a lot of free agents are going to sit and wait because they're not going to want to go to a team and then a team drafts someone who's potentially going to replace them pretty quickly. They're going to sit and hang on and see which rosters are best for them uh, to go and put, put themselves a part of. So I, I think we are. Unless somebody gets cut or put up for trade or, you know, the – beforehand that we're not aware of at the minute i think they're done yeah too if if you guys don't want to communicate with each other you can block actually each other so you don't have to see each other's comments so you can do that if you guys are arguing just block each other then you'll never see each other that that's a good feature youtube has now if the lions get tyler boyd do you see the lions uh see first pick being a dt or cornerback 
I would put edge in there too, or deep, just defensive line cornerback. Yes. That's what I'm really, really hoping. But remember this man does best player available. Okay. So he's going to go BPA. And if that's not one of those positions, he'll still go whatever BPA is, but I do believe it would, it's going to be leaning way more that we're just all hoping that BPA max matches with need. Who would you tr- who would you move up for? Uh, uh, Jared Verse and Quinion Mitchell. Those are the two guys that I personally would move up for. What about you, Ant Man? Jared Verse and Jose Newton. Like those are the two I would go big for. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, there you go, man. What's a problem to have? We have to draft. I know we got it so good at draft, man. I Brad Holmes knows exactly what he's doing. I, I love his draft skills. Hashtag lines. Brad has gone offense three out of three years. I think he will do it again. What do you both think? Actually, uh, what do you guys think? Actually, since Brad Holm has been here, we've drafted more defense than offense. I think we she spent means more money round. in 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 uh, defense than offense in free agency. It just so happens the offense is winning and doing great, and the uh, defense just has a lot of issues. So I, I at least I do see defense being quite a bit. I think they're tired of it as much as we all are. What about you, Ant Man? Mm, again, it, it depends which players he likes. Um, obviously, in the first, he's kind of gone more offense, hasn't he, really? Because he's had Jameer, Penne, and all these guys on a bit, Aiden and Jack. But it, it just depends entirely who he likes, I think, that what the way you're going to. But if, if you're going to look logically at maybe again, you're going to have a lot of offensive talent right at the top of this draft tackles, quarterbacks, wide receivers. So the odds of the better defensive guys coming down and being more readily available to us to either trade up for or to just straight drop to us would would it you know for me it would kind of indicate that possibly it would be more more chance of being a defensive guy just because of how the board is potentially going to fall. Uh, but again, I don't know who he likes. I don't know who he's, he's infatuated with. We, we we never know, do we? So it's it's a mystery. But that's kind of the good thing. Cause no team knows what we're gonna do. And when, you know, when teams don't know what you're going to do, like you remember the year we took Akuda, everybody knew we wanted to take Akuda at three. No yeah. one wanted to trade for that third pick because they knew what we were going to do and they yep. knew they could wait. Like That just screws you entirely when they know what's coming. But Brad, no idea. Hey, we're not doing sharing addresses here, folks. We're not going to be doing that. No doxing is going to happen on here. That stuff is way too out of line. Um, none of that. None of that. That's that's uncalled for. Detroit Lions have many wins. You guys think that the Lions will have this year? Is anyone going to to draft into the draft? I will be at the. Well, I'll be at Soaring Eagle night one. I'm gonna try to be at the draft y- uh, days two and three, um, for sure. How do I have many wins? I got eleven wins. I think that's that's. I think they're gonna be a better team. At the same time, they just have a harder schedule. So I'm gonna go with eleven wins. What do you got? I, I don't like to make predictions just yet because I don't know what the schedule is going to be. I don't know what the strength of the opponents is going to be. Like I thought last year was going to be tough trying to run through the AFC West and we swept it. So <laughs> you just, at this point, I don't know. I would like to say 10 wins minimum again, but getting double digit wins is tough. So I'd say 10, but I need to know more before I can predict because it is a rough schedule next year. It's rough. Uh, uh, their schedule or their their Vegas is nine and a half. I would take the over. I think they'll get over nine and a half. Mm, yeah. Lions yeah. in the first round, Lisa. I'm going to go with. It's, it says yes. It is impossible to know what these guys are going to do and who's going to be there at 29. I don't if they stay maybe like a Kool-Aid McKinstry. If they move up, I think it would be for an edge or a corner of some sort. I, we just, it's so hard to tell with these guys. It's, it's difficult. According to the simulator, you need to move up for Jay versus or <laughs> don't need to. Yeah. That's why I do. When I do mock drafts, I do the simulator multiple times because the odds of that happening is extremely unlikely. <laughs> so I, I don't think you know, he falls there. No, I think if one of them gets to 21 or 22, maybe 23, I think then you'd see him move. I think because the price wouldn't be too bad and for the play you're going to get. I th- that would be my prediction. Obviously, I have no idea, but I feel like that would be something would happen. What is your thoughts on Johnny Wilson, the 6'6", gigantic wide receiver from FSU? I was looking at this dude's a freaking huge ant man. Like you just sit up, stand in the middle of the end zone, put your hands in the air, and just catch a football. 
He's taller than me. <laughs> I know. Dude, that's I'm huge, six foot, man. I'm six four. He's, my, he's a good player. He, 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 he's a good player. I, I have my other preferences for our outside guy, but he's a good player. Brad, uh, bad quarterback draft two years in a row now. This is not a bad quarterback draft. I think it's a pretty good one, but but guess what? It doesn't really... I mean, we thought that what is it, the Zach Wilson draft would be good. Trey Lance, Mac Jones, even the court, uh, the quarterback if, went to Jacksonville. It all if, didn't look that great. If the NFL goes back to the ways of sitting rookies behind a veteran for a year or two and integrating them in, this could be one of the best quarterback drafts in some time. I will tell you now, Caleb Williams is the only day one starter in this guy, the only one who you put in day one and tell him to go out there and sling it. The rest of them need to sit behind somebody, learn and wait. And if teams do that, they will get a really good player out of it. But if you just throw all these four guys in right away, they'll most of them go flame out. It's just not going to happen. I, I got, I don't know, man, I'm not high on Caleb Williams. I know he's talented, but I don't like his personality. And I the think, team that's drafting him, they just can't. They, you know, they screwed. Who screws up Justin Fields? Like this guy, honestly. this guy is full of himself, man. You hear him talk, and it's like I, I don't like him personally. I, I'm not. I think a big he'd be fan. right if he was going to a team other than Chicago. I think he'd be fine. But the rest of them are not ready to start, and they shouldn't be thrown into starting positions. Teams need to go back to sitting them a bit and putting a vet in and letting them learn and then integrating them in. That's why there's not as many good QBs coming through now, because. Too many guys get thrown in and flame out. Yeah. Generally speaking, when I think of boss, it's it's not the ability. It's generally their personality and their training style and their lifestyle and stuff. I don't know, man. He he probably end up he ended up being really good in all my luck, but I, I don't know, man. I just got a bad feeling about this guy. Um Lions will the Lions draft more than one offensive lineman in the draft. Very possible, and it could be a tackle and a guard. I wouldn't think they'd go two guards. At all, I think that would be out of the realm. But offensive tackle, I think they could. They, they because we really don't have a, a good tackle backup right now, and oh, so no. yeah. And I love day three for development swing tackles this year. Absolutely love it. I would expect they'll go day two on a guy, and they'll certainly go day three on a guy for sure. Mm -hmm. This guy says Caleb is a bust. A D I just got diva. That, that that's my personally. I'm looking at this guy. And I'm like, I don't know, man. He just seems like a diva. It's like it kind of reminds me of Jay Cutler. Like that dude. He, I don't. He wasn't a diva, but it was like something about his personality. See, it's I'm trying to. I'm trying to be more fair to him because I spent the last two years calling USC frauds, which they are. Everyone's going, oh, they're such a great team, and they're not. They're they're really not. And I've been really harsh towards them and their players. So I'm trying to be nicer to him. But like, if he gets chance to. You know, if he's not chased all over the field and, you know, because if Chicago don't take an offensive lineman at nine, like, that's gross negligence. You're going to spend number one on a quarterback. You've got to protect him. Mm -hmm. And they didn't protect Justin Fields. If they're not going to protect Caleb Williams. They're going to get the same thing. So it just depends what they do with him. But he could be good. He could be really good. No, he's talented. I'm, mm -hmm. There is no, it's just his personality. Maybe it's just me. I could be t completely wrong. I don't know, man. I just I got that feeling about this guy. Mm -hmm. um, Brad consistently drafts a wide receiver somewhere in the draft, and he will probably dress it by the end of two. Yeah, very possible. He just goes BPA. So if a, a wide receiver is there, I'm you shouldn't be upset, folks. You really shouldn't. I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown was a fourth fourth round wide receiver. Brad knows what he's doing, and I know a lot of people was mad at the draft last year. And I'm like, calm down, everybody. He's got control of this thing, and it ended up being uh, the best draft in all of the NFL. So let's just, but when, when he makes these draft picks, let's not destroy Brad Holmes. If it's not who you wanted, if they draft a player whom I don't want throughout the whole draft, I don't care. Like I know he's got, he's got great skills and finding talent. The guy is great. The bears have not drafted quarterbacks. Well, since Jim McMahon, that is true. I don't think Brad's ever drafted a guy I've had in a mock before, in my final mock. So, like, you know, you can't let it bother you. I'd just be upset all the time. <laughs> Dude, I had Jameer Gibbs in my second round in, in a mock and Jack Campbell in the in the second round and a Hinda Hooker in the third round. So I came pretty close. Now I did Jameer Gibbs. I'm going to keep 100 in the second round. I am in the first round. 
and Jack Campbell. I absolutely loved him. Um, and I didn't have Brian Branch because I never thought Brian Branch would fall in the second round. Matter of fact, when they selected Brian Branch, I was shocked because I didn't even know he was still on the board. That's how much I just mm. assumed he was going to be gone. I, when yeah. they were like, Brian Branch, I'm like, what? Yeah. Oh, that's a value pick. Yeah. Let's see. Do you see the Lions drafting a linebacker? Um, They could. They could. Anthony Pittman did leave. Um, And when they do draft linebackers, they could be hybrids to a pass Russian linebacker. I wouldn't put it past them at all. And again, if they do take a linebacker, it's not necessarily anything bad in the current guys. They're just going with BPA. So, yeah, I could, I could see a situation. Do I think it's high in their list? No, I don't think it's high. Um, because we got, all, like, our starters are good to go. Like We're good to go right now. So, um, But let, let's not get upset if they go that route. If Jay Cutler loved football or you're just like a lie, he'd probably be a Hall of Famer. I saw a few games of where he was engaged. And that dude just, dude, yeah, man, when he's engaged, he looked good. But when he was smoking a cigarette, the smoking Jay, he just never cared. Amen, Mike, no freaking out this year. Brad picks. Yep, no freaking out, folks. And we're going to be live at the Soaring Eagle Casino for NFL Draft Day. One, Herman Moore, myself, a lot of folks at the Lions Nation. I'm sure Dose Dion, everything King's going to be there. I'm sure there's going to be some Michigan players there. Last time we did it, um, we had some Michigan players. We had some former NFL players all there. And it's, it's going to be a good time. So come on and hang out. You can sign autographs on all that lovely stuff. I got one draft with Gibbs, Branch, and Campbell Green. That's you did good, Ronan. You did good. And you got Antoine Green. Roman, you if you would have bet on that and you'd have been like a millionaire. <laughs> if you would have got that, oh my God. And then the Dern <laughs> got the he got Amon Ross St. Brown all right. He used to talk about St. Brown for a year. I can do good player. I can pick good players on day three. Just I can't do it for the Lions. So, you know, I just I just take what I can get. But my, yeah, you see, whenever I like do my final lines mock draft, you can guarantee not a single one of them's coming here. Oh. It's so hard. Yeah. It's oh, so I, don't, hard. I just love doing it. I just love picking good players. I don't care where they end up. Sometimes I just want a player to be yeah, good. It's or fun. To sort of back it up. Exactly. It's very fun. And then a the guy that came in earlier, Jager, Jager, Jager. dude, you are a freaking Scrooge, man. Mock draft. Listen to what people say is fun. I do it all the time. I even and listen to Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper Jr. I know it's not going to happen, but it's entertaining. It's What's been nice because we've only been doing it since the end of January. Like normally, you start in November. Yeah, so yeah, we just it year. is. It is it fresh. Feel, mock draft seasons felt very short this year. It has. Dude, been. Generally speaking, I'm doing mock drafts after week four. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even look till after the season were done this year. Who is your favorite line of all time outside Barry? Mine is Chris Spielman. Well, um, I'll, can I go with two here? First off, one is Herman Moore because he's my boss and he's awesome. He's the nicest guy on the planet. Um, the dude would take a shirt off for any of you. That's that he really is a nice guy. Super nice. Player wise, Calvin Johnson is my my favorite player of all time. Why he was in my era. I got to watch every single snap of his. And he shouted my kids out and myself out. So when you shout my kids out, you pretty much get you become favorite really quick. What about you, Amman? Oh, it's Glover. Like Glover was the one player when he left that I was genuinely upset. And it's why I've hated Matt Patricia ever since, because he oh. forced him out of this team. But Glover, again, he is the nicest guy in the world. And when our, when our podcast was in its early days, like, you know, we're still really small. He's getting on with when, when we were tiny, tiny, he came on our show and gave us the time of day. And he is the nicest guy in the entire world ever. And like I say, I will forever hate Matt Patricia for what he did to Glover Quinn, but I will forever love Glover Quinn. And I, you know, I will always root for him. He'll always be my favorite guy. Matt Patricia and Quinn destroyed this team. I mean, they got rid of Quandre Diggs, Darius. I'll hate Lake, them till the end of my days. Golden I, Tate. They, they thought Will Harris would be the stud. They were the worst regime, Ant-Man, that these eyes has ever seen. I've never seen anything like it. Now, Bob Quinn, before Matt Patricia, was not bad. But boy, oh boy, when he came in there, everything just went to garbage, man. This is why I love Brad so much and why I, I really staunchly defend him because we've seen what we can be saddled with here. Like, Brad is just a breath of fresh air completely and what he's done to fix the problems that regime created was just amazing that's why i love these drafts i know we're going to get studs now like not 
idiots and trying to you know play them out of position and do all this sort of stuff with them it's it's terrible um, run dmg says jason hansen he's beloved we had him on here mm-hmm. we had jason hansen on here um and he was one of my dad's favorite too so like when i when he got on here i'm like my dad passed away I just want to say he was he loved you man he loved you he loved you as a kicker and that was really really cool um he was a a great detroit lion really good i know there, there's a couple players i liked and people be like Oh, that was players you like for the Lions. I like Reggie Bush. I always like Reggie Bush. Um, so when the Lions signed him in free agency, I was happy because I liked him coming out of the draft. That was cool. I love Quandre Diggs. He was my favorite player of that era. Quandre Diggs. But I remember we drafted him, and I liked him coming out of the draft. Tease Tabor. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. That 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 was not a good pick, man. <laughs> that was not a good pick. <laughs> Oh, that was a rough one. I'm like, why are you getting this slow guy? Oh, I mean, no. I mean, what, you've got two players here from between 2017 and 2020, those drafts, I think it is now. It's like, it's, you know, I don't count JRM because he had to leave and then came back. So that's just how poor that is. We've had, we've, what, how many draft picks have we lost while Brad's been here? Like, even Jamar Jefferson's still here on the practice. Even the seventh rounders have survived. Like, nobody's going so so good like the um that's why like we lost we're losing brock right and everyone's like oh no we're we gonna do and i'm like the end you'll just draft <laughs> a guy they'll be better like it that's what's so good about this regime we lose free agency man it doesn't really matter we know he's gonna come in there and replenish the talent and probably get better build around your own like our draft picks care about this team like, like Quinn's thing was drafting high price players from elsewhere who don't care about this team. You want guys who are invested in your team. So when your team is full of rookies and then highly paid draft picks that you picked, that's where it all comes from. Hey, I won't have any Tavai slander in here. They messed Tavai up bad. He, you see him play at the Patriots now. He's actually a good player. They overdrafted him. And then they messed around with him. Out they of position. overdrafted him as the problem. They overdrafted him. Jelani Tava and, and me and Matt stood by this. There was a good player in there. The Patriots have made a good player out of him. He should not have been a second round pick. Screw, no, he shouldn't. That's not Tavai's fault. It's, it's not. Cost, he's not a Quinn's fourth or a fifth rounder. Yes. And he should have developed longer. And then he got pit with Patricia. But yeah. yeah, that was a bad pick at that spot. When you're like, who is this guy? When, when you got to go, and when you're somebody who studies it, like an Ant-Man who will look at this draft 24-7, you're like, who is this guy? That's not a good sign, but it's that early. <laughs> if we talk in fifth, sixth, seventh round, it's all good, man. Uh, but when you're talking about that in the second round, to be Thankfully, that, that was, was be- <laughs> Thankfully, that was before the days I did draft in college stuff, so I had no idea, I had no idea at the time, so... <laughs> Lions taking a step back this season. Bears, they're not going to sweep the Lions. Dude, I, I think your team uh, is well, actually well, well, broski. Well, and I'm not being a hater. I think I think the Bears are rising. I think they're, they've done a lot of good things. They're on the rise, and I think they're going to have a mixed season this year. They'll have really good games where they dominate, and I'll think they'll have games where they lose games because they're going to have a rookie quarterback. That's what I think. I don't think they're going to sweep the Lions. I don't. I think they're a much better team, though. Much better team. Man should be careful talking about Chicago, Detroit, and sweeps because didn't the Tigers just sweep the White Sox? Like we own Chicago right now, so they're poor front. Like them, they they had the perfect chance this year to stick with Justin Fields, trade out, and put all the talent in the world around him and go win things. The only way they could have screwed up this offseason was by letting him go, and they did for nothing. Like it's Six a poorly run, play, right? it's a poorly run franchise. They've accelerated their rebuild by paying a load of outsiders big money to come in without having a good young core of their own. That thing is soon going to blow up in their face and they're going to be bad again. And we get to laugh as we continue to dominate them. Hashtag Mike's a real one. Thank you for what you do, Paul. Thank you so much, Paul. Appreciate you. The Bears dominated the Lions last December. They dominate them. That's why we won one game and you lost one game and you won one game. 
You so, guys are a top 10 draft pick. We were in the NFC championship game. So it doesn't really, I don't really care. Like R- Ryan Poles has never finished higher than fourth in the NFC North. That kind of, when he said he was going to take it and never give it back, I didn't realize he meant the bottom of it. You kind of assumed he meant the top, but he got them down there and he wants to keep them there. Oh, they're in denial as well. Fields didn't suck. He's a good quarterback and you ruined him. You were all Bears gave away the game in Detroit. No, I mean, if, if, if you lose a game when you should win, I'm not going to say that because then I could say, well, we should have won the NFC championship game, but we gave it away. Loss is a loss is a win is a win. It is what it is. It doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. That's all that, that's the NFL right there. Fields was he he gave the Lions a lot of problems, that's for sure. Yeah, he that's did. for sure. He was a, him and Trubisky were for whatever reason, it could always hurt the Detroit Lions. I don't know what it is. I don't know it what is. they expect when he had to run five hundred yards for his life every game. Like <laughs> only so much you can do. When you've spent three years not protecting him and throwing him to the walls, and you're like, oh, he's the problem. Like, no, maybe you should have drafted better and protected him, like we did with Jared Goff. We've protected Jared Goff, and we got the best version of him. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, you got you to protect your quarterback. You got to protect the quarterback. One thing that I didn't like about Fields, though, is he would hold on to the football way too long. If he could somehow have get rid of that football, I think he'd be much better. So thumbs mm-hmm. up to Mike Utley, Eric and so in bad spelling, beer fell, Lomas Brown and the old lineman. Lomas Brown's awesome. Yeah, dude, all reps to the old school Lions players, man. And the Ronin, he's been watching them 67 years. All props to the old school Detroit Lions player. Folks who've been on for about an hour, Ant-Man, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me at Roar of the Lions UK. We are a group of British Detroit Lions fans from across the pond. You can see us on Mondays. I do show on Wednesdays usually. So, yeah, come check us out if you want to come and see the Lions from a different perspective. 100%, man. Check them out. Go to Roar Lions UK. It's my favorite. I listen to them all the time. Keep running your mouth, British guy. The Lions. Oh, I will. Don't you worry. I will run my mouth for time immemorial. I hate the Bears, and I will continue to hate on them for all time. With that said, folks, adios. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me. And what was left over, I put towards my dreaming. But the only thing in life that has meaning are the things you gotta work for, believe me. Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the f- hours It takes to get some power Don't be f***ing sour Take a cold shower Scream until you're louder Work until you're prouder And f*** all the doubters They're just your downers I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown I'm off in these f***ing clouds Who were all taught they deserve it now It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown